night, Brody. Sleep tight. Wait a minute, Mom. Don't leave yet. Can you stay a while longer? What's going on, Brody? You need to get some sleep. I'm scared. That book made me nervous. And now I'm thinking about all the things I'm afraid of. Like what? Well, let's see. There's airplanes, bees, coronavirus, dogs, fire, ghosts, lice, mice, nighttime. Questions, roller coasters, teasing, worms, x rays, and zoo. Do you just list all your fears in alphabetical order? <coughs> Whoa. I can relate. I feel afraid sometimes. So, how do I feel better right now? I can't sleep when I'm scared. Well, stories help. When I'm afraid or I am worrying, I remember that I'm a part of a story that is way bigger than myself. And God's story is full of people who are sometimes afraid. You know, I think I have time to tell you one more story tonight. This part of God's story is during a time when many people were afraid of many things, just like us. It all begins in Nazareth with, in a town in Galilee with a woman named Anne. Oh, hi. Uh, welcome. Welcome to my home. Um, do you want to talk to me? Have we met before? Have we? Do you want to hear what I have to say? I do. Pardon me. Let me start over. Greetings, favorite one. God is with you. Um, what kind of greeting is that? Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God, and now you are going to have a baby boy. You will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and his kingdom will have no end. How can this be? How can this happen? The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be holy. He will be called the Son of God. Also, your relative, Elizabeth, is going to be having a baby, even though people thought it would be impossible. But nothing is impossible with God. Was all of that a question? Oh, hmm. Well, are you asking me if I want to do this? Uh, good question. Yes. Here I am, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to this message. Mary is pregnant? How is that possible? We aren't married yet, and the law says that is not good. Not good at all. She claims that this child, the child she carries, is actually God's child. My only option is to marry her and then divorce her quietly. That'll save my reputation, at least. <sighs> but she will be disgraced. I don't know what to do. And I'm afraid. Oh, Mary. Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to get married. God's Holy Spirit has made Mary pregnant. She will have a son, and you will name him Jesus. God saves, because he will save his people from their sins. <sighs> huh. I want to marry Mary. I want to marry Mary. We're going to have a baby. We're going to name him Jesus. And I'm going to be a dad. I need to pack. Questions. Why is Joseph packing a bag? Do angels still visit people in dreams? Why is everyone making such a big deal about, about this? It's just a baby. This story is so weird. I just... Yeah, I don't know the answer to most of those questions. This is a bigger than life kind of story. And there are a lot of unexplainable, miraculous parts. 
That sounds a lot like Pastor Joel says when I ask tough questions. Good. I'm glad I sound like Pastor Joel because we don't have all the answers. Now, I do know the answer to one of those questions. Why is Joseph packing? I understand that. We need to meet the emperor. Rome. It is I, your Lord and Savior, Good Shepherd, Light Way, and Prince of Peace, Caesar Augustus. First, I want to say you're welcome for all the great things I've done for you. There has never been an emperor as powerful and glorious as me. My empire is vast. You people are obedient. I am saving you all, all of you, and you owe me so much, so much. Citizens, I want to count you. Yes, let's get a good head count so that you can all pay me what I am owed. Go to your hometown and register your family so that you can show proper appreciation of my awesomeness. I decree it to be so. Farewell, my faithful children. May you know my magnificent ways. Farewell. Okay, the good news is, I think I found us a place to stay. Finally, this baby's not gonna wait much longer. Where are we staying tonight? Oh, did you get a room at that inn that I like? The one with the good breakfast? Um, not exactly. It was full. Oh no! Where are we gonna sleep now? With the shepherds outside or with the donkeys in the stables? What? No. Who would do that? Joseph, this baby's coming soon! I know, I know. The guest rooms are full, but I found an innkeeper who will let us stay at a small space in his home. Oh, good. Yeah! It's a nice space! Lots of hay. Maybe a few animals. All right, let's do this. Okay, stop there. What? Why? I don't think I want to hear about the birth part. Hmm, okay, we can talk about that later. The Bible doesn't really tell us anything about the birth anyways. It just says that Mary had the baby wrapped him in strips of cloth and put him in the feeding trough. That's it. But those are important details to remember for the next part of our story. It takes place in a field. Okay, keep going. There were shepherds living outside in the fields nearby, watching over their sheep. They were about to be frightened by some powerful messengers from God. What they would soon have to realize, they did not have to be afraid. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God in his highest. <coughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Is this thing even working? Am I on mute? Are you people even listening? Do not be afraid, I bring you good news that will cause joy to all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This is a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and laying in a manger. Good news for all the people. The Messiah is born, a Savior. Glory to the God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom God favors. That's all. Goodbye. So, you both saw that, right? Um, yes I did. Bah. That happened. to go. Bring the sheep. I 
think we have to. Bye. and laid in a manger. We won't forget. Let's go. You too, sheep. Come on. That was a miracle. Bye. That's exactly how the angel described it. The baby was wrapped in cloth and laid in a manger. Friends, we have seen something amazing tonight. I don't know about you, but it feels like the world is changing. Yeah, but why do you think we got to see it? We're shepherds. Nobody cares about us. We're poor and powerless. Oh yeah, but the baby's mother, Mary, acted like this always was supposed to happen. So this is meant for people like us. This baby will lift up the world. And bring down the lofty? Wouldn't that be something? Sure, I believe there's no limit to what this baby can do. Hey, shepherds, was that star there last night? I don't think I've ever seen that one before. Hello, and welcome to our observatory. We are the wise men. Wise people. The Magi. We are really more like scientists. Astronomers, we study the stars. We study the stars so much, when something happens, we know it immediately. And we have just found a new star. We must follow our scientific instincts to find out why there is a new star in the sky. We now begin our journey. Are we there yet? You literally just asked that? Now? Yes, yes, it looks like we are here. Here it is, Bethlehem. Let's go look up the local king for more information. Did somebody say king? That would be me. I'm the big cheese around here. Everybody's talking about me. I'm a powerful, mighty king. We got it. Best king ever. So we're here to because we're looking for a newly born king. The child born king of the Jews. We observed his star at its rising. And we come to honor him. Excuse me for a moment. I need to make a call on the phone. Hey, put me through to my smart people. This is your king, the very best king. According to your research, where's the Messiah supposed to be? Uh-huh. I mean, supposed to, where's the Messiah supposed to be born? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Bethlehem? Are you sure? Bye-bye. So yeah, this is great. So go by this child and report back to me so I too can worship him. Uh, sure, okay. We can do that. Let's get out of here. When we left Herod, he decided to sit around, be jealous, and plan his revenge. He felt very threatened that there was a new leader, that the people were excited to meet. But we found Jesus and brought gifts to this special child. We brought gold. Frankincense. And myrrh. Usually, these gifts
this are for royalty. Powerful people. Grown men. But we brought these gifts to a tiny, weak, oppressed child. Even though we didn't know what exactly was going on, we knew he was important. This good news would turn everything upside down. Oh, and by the way, we didn't return to that wicked King Herod. Nope, no way. We were born in a dream to take a different way home. You can say that we took the scenic route. And now we return to watching the stars. Those wise people were really brave. They honored the king God chose, brought him presents, disobeyed the orders of King Herod, and made it home safely. Yes, they were brave and determined. Everybody in the story was, I think. From Mary and Joseph to the shepherds and the Magi, they all recognized that the birth of Jesus was going to change the world. Brody, are you feeling safe and sleepy yet? The story's coming to an end. Hmm. Yes, I feel safe and sleepy, but this isn't really the end. What? Why not? It's bedtime and we need to get some sleep. Mom, this is just the beginning. Jesus is born, he grows up, he changes water to wine, he teaches, he... He flips tables. Yes, yes, yes. You're right. Jesus' birth is just the beginning. We have a lot to talk about, but it's late. So now let's focus on one special moment. This one night that brought us to Jesus. Okay, that makes sense. This is a good story. God's story is unfolding more good news every day. And in the end, all things will be made right. That doesn't mean we won't be afraid along the way, but we can trust and love and Justice will have the final word. Speaking of the final word, so a final word from Mary, the mother of Jesus. My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior. For you, God, have looked with favor of the loneliness of your servant. Surely from now on all generations shall call me blessed. For you, the mighty one have done great things for me, and holy is your name. Your mercy is for those who fear God from generation to generation. You, O oh God, have shown strength with your arms. You have scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. You, O oh God, have brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. You have filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. You have helped your servant Israel in remembrance of your mercy. According to the promises you made to our ancestors, to Abraham and Sarah, and to their descendants forever. 